Yo, what is going on guys? It's me Kingsticks. I'm gonna be showing you how to play Annie Mid today and carry. We're not just talking about picking Annie Mid because you're auto filled or picking Annie Mid because you think she's easy. We're talking about carrying. Annie has oops, here we go, auto attack Q. Oh, what is she doing? Oh, Blitz Crank. He might flash for this. I'm just gonna run. If Blitz wasn't there, I would have traded with her a little more. Anyway, so on Annie, you either go Predator or Electric Root. For your secondary tree, it depends. If you want to stay in lane and if it's a really scrappy matchup, you can even go Bone Plating or Second Win. In this case, I don't want to stay in lane. I want to roam and influence the map. Mid, low, elo, Annie needs to be taking Predator so you can roam. Shove Wave around level 5 right when you're about to level 6 and then roam with Predator Boots. Your first buy should be Predator Boots. Your first real item should be Luton's Echoes, usually into a Spellbinder, and then of course picking up Sork Shoes uh, around the time you have your Luton's Echoes. You can either get it before or after, it doesn't matter too much. So basically guys, all you need to know about Annie is her Q is this far, her autos are this far, so in your normal trades it's going to be a Q auto, and your auto range is actually incredibly long on Annie as well. It looks like we have an AFK on our team, not just one AFK, we have two AFKs. That's amazing. That is fantastic. But anyways, you're going to be farming primarily with your Q's last hits. It resets the mana. And it also reduces the cooldown substantially. She stepped up way too far. You can just smack her with an auto Q. You can even Q auto. It's usually better to Q auto if they're at max range. Because you're once again, your autos have more range. All right, she's in a bit of a weird spot. Taking Electrocute in lane will let you trade hard, harder and faster, but like I said, it throws off your mid late game. Not having the Predator. There we go. Almost got that one as well. We're up slight CS. Still have AFKs, not bad. Just gonna focus on farming in the early game, using your Qs to last hit and your autos. Get your E at level three, max Q first, W second, E last, and taking points in your ulti whenever you can, of course. Our wave's starting to hard shove, so we're gonna wanna finish shoving it out so we're not sitting in a weird spot for too long. So we're just going to start to pound the wave since we have too many minions we don't want to be this far up for too long or it's easy to gank us she's going to step up she's going to get traded on we're going to use our e to take less damage and also speed away now that her invisibility is down she can't really do that all right we're going to shove that wave right on top of her she can't really catch that it's just too big we're going to go ahead and reset while she's handling that. The wave should reset. I'll get my boots and I can even roam on that. I uh, had two AFKs for so long. Holy cow. All right. So it looks like my bot lane actually got a kill. So normally I could just Predator pretty much right around this turret. It lasts for 15 seconds of speed up. 45%, which is insane. I could even Predator from here into lane. Which I'm thinking about, but I can't kill her. If I had ulti or if my jungler was ganking, I would. Looks like Warwick's having some trouble. Let's get our passive up to three stacks. We'll roam on this. Okay, we're going to roam. We got Predator boots. We're going to run him down. Oh, he's really fast. Did he go... Oh, he just got sped up by the scuttle, I guess. I think Mundo just TP'd there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how he got there. He's in a bad spot, though. We're going to cut him off his flash route. Isn't it really nowhere to go? Alright, Warwick got the kill. It's alright. We're going to go back and catch that wave. Let's not walk into that bush. Let's make sure she's not there. Alright, we're good to go. So yeah, Annie, you're not usually going to be getting many kills in lane unless you're playing against a big noob. Her damage early is bad until she's level 6. So unless you go electrocute and then you, you ult your opponent, you're not going to really kill them. And Annie doesn't play well against champions that have a lot of range. Things like Malzahar or Zerath, things that can kind of outrange you. She can struggle against, so I recommend playing against melee champs. If you are in a tough range matchup, just try not to get poked too much and try to get as much CS as possible. And wait for ganks. If you're in a tough range matchup, you really do need ganks because you just don't have the pressure. We're going to go ahead and roam here. Another fight. We had the wave in a push spot so we can get there far before she can. We can use our ease to speed up if we so choose. 
I'm gonna save my W to secure the kill. There we go. Your W comes out really fast. So if you don't want your teammates to get the kills because you don't trust them, just hold on to your W and you can pinch it off really fast. Looks like a Kali is being interesting. Looks like her wave shoving into me. She has more minions so I can just chill. Hit her with max range autos. My autos have so much range that she can't really cue me if I auto her. Hit her with another auto. Doesn't really do much. She has D shield. Super, super safe start. Want that cannon minion? Always feel free to last hit with your Q guys. Completely refunds the mana and it half refunds the cooldown as well, which is huge. So one of the best things about Annie is a beginner champion. Last hitting is a big part of why people are stuck in low elo. As long as you're getting that CS gold, which is huge, you'll be scaling up quite nicely and you can roam whenever your predator's up. Now that my predator's almost up, I actually kind of want to shove this wave. Auto attack Q there. The closer you are, the faster your Q gets there. Because just think of it like a bullet. The closer you are, the faster it gets there. I guess I can arrow. Because bullets travel so fast, people don't even think about that. Alright, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and W the back wave so I can just one shot it with auto Qs. Alright, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Kill that, dump that wave. Akali roamed, I probably should have pinged it. I didn't really realize she was roaming there. I do have the tools to get a kill here. I just got a predator and get the Caitlyn. And I dumped a big wave into her turret, which is pretty nice. Mm, is Caitlyn gonna stay? Yeah, she is. We're just gonna run all the way behind her here with our predator. All right, we got the kill, very nice. We're going to go ahead and shove this wave now. Uh, probably shouldn't have shoved that, actually. Our bot lane's on their way. We'll just leave. And Tibber will fly to you if Tibber's far enough away. So if you send him in the opposite direction when he gets too far away, he'll just teleport to you. So if, so if you need to get him out of a bad situation, just turn him the other way and he'll TP on you. Hit her with a Q. That was actually a very dangerous situation. I'll let Tibbers push the wave and also attack her a bit. I'll pull him back here. He's up a little too far. I'm worried about him all the way up there. We'll send him on the wave. He's about to run out of time. He's on a time limit. He only lives for like 30 seconds. He doesn't live for very long. I'm going to W the wave. I'm going to ping the Akali missing. All right, she's back. We got her stun back up. We can start to pressure her a little bit more with our autos. She can't really all in us when our stun's up. And our ease up, which is the speed up and damage reduction as well. So... We have the wave in a good spot. We're not gankable, as you see right here. She's having to use her spells just to last hit for how we're controlling the wave. So we're going to pull this, these minions back, just like that. Get a ward down. She, we know she's roaming, so I'll ping it out. She's not here. And I can just freeze it. My predator is still down for 50 seconds. So this is actually a really good spot for me to keep the wave. They can't gank me here. If Akali steps up, she's putting herself at risk. And uh, when my predator is like 20 seconds almost up but I can start to shove wave but right now I'm safe and she's the one in danger gonna hit her with an auto got off her bone plating it's usually best to hit them with your stun Q but it's not worth missing CS like I did there I shouldn't have autoed it I messed that cannon up she's just sitting really far back I am gonna roam here in a second though I'm starting to build up a bit of a minion wave it's tough because every time she steps up to Q it, she kind of resets it. So we're going to W the back line, get this thing start pushing in our favor. Just Q spam, last hit. I'm going to have to Predator here. Kill Kane. Ooh, get Tibbs on her. Oh, Tibbers! I didn't realize the call had the second part of her ult. I should have pressed my E there. Right as it came up, I should have also used a potion. That was my bad. I was really greedy with my potions. If I would have acted a, activated a potion way sooner, I actually would have lived there. That's what feels bad right there. Now we're going to build into our Luden's Echo. I'm going to get a big chunk of it, and we can also get our Sork Shoes. Predator does do a lot of damage. So if you're wondering why I'm Predator there, not only did I get to that fight sooner, but it's a big burst of damage just like Electrocute is. When you proc it. Akali got pretty fed there. I have a CS lead. And I'm about to have a level lead as well. Her wave shoving into me. Which is lovely. 
I haven't been gankable at any part of this game. Even though Warwick hasn't really ganked mid, you do want to play it safe, guys. If you're constantly putting yourself in a position to get ganked, you're going to lose a lot more games. So if your Predator's down and your ult's down, there's really no reason for you to roam. So you should just try to freeze the wave, like, in a very safe area. Not under the turret, but near the turret. Like, kind of where I am right now. This is a pretty safe spot. I am going to have to thin this out, though. They have too many minions. Cannon minions alone is very strong. So I'm going to pull it over here to the side. I'm taking a lot of damage. I don't see a call. It looks like she's just roaming around. She went invisible. Yeah, she got away. We're not going to get her unless Warwick ults her. We still have the wave in a lovely spot. Our Predator's up in 20 seconds, so we're going to start to shove this. This is when we want to start building up a wave. And then when this... Basically, whenever you have a wave that's about to arrive and you already have minions fighting, that's when you want to start shoving. Like, when you want to start shoving. Since my Predator's almost up, my wave's on its way, and I want to start getting this thing moving. I'm going to W the whole wave there, so I can one-shot back line. Also, choose up front line. Now I can start to roam here in a second. All right, let's start to roam here. Looks like Kane's way out of position. We're going to Predator into him. He's not going to get away. Going to kill him. RW, he's dead. It's that easy, guys. I Does it look like this is that hard? It's not. It's just staying alive, farming safe, and then whenever your Predator's up, you start to shove and then roam, and then it keeps the mid laner. Like, they have to stay there. This is why this is so strong in low mid elo, because it's very difficult to punish. Unless you're in a really hard range matchup, like versus Syndra, you get to farm for free. You get to get your uh, your power spikes for free, your level 6, and your tier 2 boots. Enemies out of position. Let's let Tibbers heal up a bit, and then we'll TP him back over here. There we go. He's far enough away. He's back. We're going to go ahead and just W this whole little slice. All right. Very good. Got a lot of value. I think Akali's roaming on this. We're going to get some turret plates. We don't have ulti or predator, so now is actually not a great time to roam. It's just not great. We got minions anyways. We're getting turret plates. I should have pinged it more, but realistically, there's only so much you can do. If I had predator or ulti, I would have roamed, but without it, I'm not going to be able to do much anyways. So we're just going to non-stop auto spam. Last hit with Qs. Spam our Qs on these. There we go, just like that. Then remember, the closer you are, the faster your Q will land. So if the mini is very low and you feel like your Q is not going to land in time, you can always get up closer and Q it. And you use an amazing escape if they're chasing you. Boom! Big movement speed for a second. For three seconds, is it? Oh, so the movement speed is a second and a half, and then the damage reduction is for three seconds. So it's still a really good movement speed. Second and a half of movement speed is pretty big. 46%. Uh, it does decay, but still. We're going to ignite him. Looks like Cyan ignited him as well. So we <laughs> that's actually a waste. But at least he died. If you both ignite somebody, it doesn't stack. It just It's still just one ignite, unfortunately. It just resets the ignite duration. I'm going to Predator on her. We're going to Q her. We can Q. Ooh. We're going to activate Potion. Stun her in place. Auto. She's dead. Easy, guys. Annie is really strong if you play with Predator. If you're playing her Electrocute, you're just hoping your... You're hoping your laner ganks you. You're hoping your jungler ganks you. If your jungler doesn't gank you and you go Electrocute, you have a lot less options. If you have Predator, you can always set up a semi-push and then roam. Like I'm about to do here on this guy. I'll just get him from behind the turrets. Get him, Tibbers! <laughs> I left Tibbers over there and then sent him in. Tibbers is a beast. Tibbers actually does a lot of damage, guys, and he can tank a lot of turret shots like you see there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and run mid. I think Akali's roaming on this. So we're going to activate, not a potion because I don't see her, but we're just going to walk a safe way. And we're going to shove this wave in to punish her roam. Looks like Mundo's coming mid. All right, Akali's here. We're just going to back up. Is he going to... What is he doing? He's actually trying to punish us. 
Kali might try to roam. Dragon's coming up. I need to reset, guys. I'll try to shove this and reset for drag. We'll be a little late to dragon, but we'll have we'll be really strong. So if our teammates can actually just stall for a bit, we'll be fine. We're gonna e away from her. I, I activated my potion as well. I thought she was gonna all in me. I was very scared because I don't have ult, and uh, she actually has more items than me because I haven't backed in a while. Now that I have my Ludens, I'm going to go ahead and build straight into the Spellbinder. Spellbinder is a very good item on Annie. Anything that gives mobility is very strong for her. So the Predator, your Tier 2 Boots. The reason why we go Ludens is that the 20% CDR is strong. It also gives mana, AP. It, it gives you really everything you need. So Ludens is one of the few items you're going to be building that isn't mo movement speed related early. In general on Annie, movement speed related items early. Your Predator and Tier 2 Boots is your real power spike. The Ludens is just for damage. Because Annie needs mobility, guys. You have the damage already, and you have the CC. You just need to be able to get to them. Looks like they're chasing down my Scion. I'm going to Predator into this. Uh, looks like they let him be. <clears throat> yep, there's Mundo. This is free. I'll have my stun with all four abilities. Ignite him. He's dead. I'm going to send Tipper in the other direction. Nice. Mm. Alright. Nice. 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 Keep Tibbers on them. Make sure you're pressing Tibbers on the enemies to like keep them engaged. Don't worry, Tibbers. I'll save you. Just ran away. Pushed him forward. And we can come back and heal him a little bit. Wow, that she was way out of line. Just Q stunned her point blank range. I could have W'd, because W actually comes out faster than your Q does. She, I don't know why she would did that. I think she thought Blitzcrank was gonna land hook. Oof, like that. I got to E away. Got to use my teammates as a meat shield here. Blitzcrank did a lot of damage. Okay, we got what we need. We're gonna go ahead and reset here. Hopefully, Caitlyn doesn't ult. We should have backed up a little bit farther, to be honest. And now we have Spellbinder. It's really, really nice. Lots of AP. Relatively cheap item for how much AP it gives. 120 AP, 10% movement speed, so we're even faster. Celerity stacks with that very well. Celerity is better than faster you are. It's very good with your Ventless Hunter, so we have a nice little trifecta here. Predator is almost up. It also gives you a big burst of movement speed and AP once you get some stacks on it, so whenever spells happen around you. Max W second, Q first, E last, ultimate whenever you can. Go to the start of the video for the runes, guys, and the full items, everything like that. It'll all be there if you have any questions. I'm going to E to speed up into this. I'm trying to get here. I'm going to Q him. All right, he's dead. Tips right on his head. I'm going to predator. Ooh, you can't predator, so that's something you guys should know. If Tibbers is fighting them and you try to predator, it'll put your predator on cooldown, which sucks. If you're doing damage or taking damage of any kind, even if it's from minions, and you're trying to channel your predator, it'll cancel it. So I'm actually glad that happened. So I could tell you that. It's very frustrating that it works that way, but it's just how it is. Otherwise, predator would just be too strong. We're going to have to E to get to this guy. We got him. Hit him midair with QW. Enemies are out of position. I think I can pinch them here. Spellbinder, E speed up. QW, she's dead. Annie just pawns people who are out of position, guys. Chinese boosters love to play Annie mid because if the enemies make mistakes or if they just roam, they win for free. Annie is an amazing solo queue champion. Got Q down up. I don't have ulti. I don't think we can one shot him. He's kind of tanky. My Predator and Tibbers are almost up, so I can channel it. Remember, Predator's channel for a second and a half, so make sure you're not taking damage during that second and a half or it'll put it on cooldown. Make sure you're not doing damage either. Your Tibbers has a Sunfire burn around him, so if Tibbers is near anything, he's going to be damaging. We'll play around Scion. He's the only one showing on map, so the enemies are likely to go to him. So we'll use him kind of kind of like a flame, and the enemies are a bunch of moths. We'll let them come to Scion. I think Kane saw me, unfortunately, but I'll ping out the red. Double stun, ignite Mundo. That was really strong. Got 
Get Tivers on him. I need to use my spell binder. Not bad. Should get the turret. Got him. I can flash on this guy. I can flash to him. Alright, that's GG guys. That's how you play Annie mid. Don't focus on necessarily killing your opponent. Just farm up. Play around smart predator roams and play around your ultimate. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.